I'm thrilled to be here today. Welcome to uh, Mr. Robert Magazine. We're with the amazing, fabulous, beautiful, wondrous actress, Tara Reed. Hi, Tara. Hey. Well, I'm the beautiful, most amazing, amazing guy. The one and only Derek. We all know who he is. <laughs> Well, I'm so happy that we finally got to do this because we've been talking about it for a really long time. And, you know, uh, for people that don't know, we are close personal friends, holidays, fun times. You're always, always are supportive. And, you know, you're such a great friend and such a fabulous, fabulous ally to the LGBTQ plus community and you are just an overall fabulous person. So I was so happy that we were able to come together and do this because as I always tell everyone, you know, uh, don't waste me. You know, I'm always telling everyone, wait till something good is really rolling and then let's boom, let's do something really cool. And I'm so excited about your shoot. We had the best day and it was the best reason because you just did the Marc Jacobs with Heaven campaign, which came out so cool and so iconic, which frankly, you know, you've been working since you were a very young girl and you really are a, an icon. I started, I've been, um, I'm 47. I did my first movie at seven. So I've actually been a working actress uh, for, 40 years. 40 like, years, yeah. Wow. Exactly. That started at seven. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Now, you know what? You, I really thought about this, uh, and I was going to say something to you before we started, but I wanted to hold it, you know? And it's, it's very funny about this business because, you know, in any other business, if you had worked in that business for 40 years, you would have a respect that they would really, really hold on to. But this is the sort of business that when you're really young and you're hot, you get a lot of respect. But then even with longevity, sometimes it doesn't, it just doesn't happen. And they really kind of forget, you know, even though you've done the most incredible things, you have this longevity and then they just kind of throw you to the side, which is, I mean, which Hollywood is really known for. But what I admire about you is that you are a survivor and you just keep going. You know, and what what makes you what makes you really keep going like that and just keep really pushing forward? Uh well, since I started at such a young age, I I fell in love with the world I'm in and the art that I do. I mean, you can have dancers, you could have, you know, writers, you can have there's so many different kinds of artists, you know. Um but my art that I fell in love with was acting as a very small child. This word will be described, a brand new word, remember, by a seven-year-old from New Jersey. Her name is Tara Reed. Tara, please. I ask people how they feel about being movie stars. And so they said, fine. I love being movie stars. It's very fun to be on TV. And then I, and I said, I'll give you a piece of paper and I'll write my name on it and you can keep it how famous I ever get. And then they were like, I didn't ask her that. Well, that's life, Tara. And, you know, I remember that one of the first things that I wanted to do is uh, when I watched E.T. and I saw Drew, Mar Drew Barrymore and, uh, and I'm like, Mommy, I want to do that, you know. And, um, then how I got discovered, I was at home. I lived in New Jersey when I grew up and we went to the mall in Jersey. I was me and my brother and my mom and we went to the food court. So she put me and my brother at the table and she went to get us pizza. And this lady that was sitting next to us, she's like, is that your daughter? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, I'm a young talent manager and I live in New York City. And there's a movie right now based on a Stephen King film from Larry Cohen, and it's called The Return of Salem's Lot. She's like, your daughter's perfect for it. But my mom's like, well, she doesn't even know how to act, so I, I don't know that she could do this. And then the manager said to my mom, trust me, this is what they're looking for. 
So I walked in my very first edition and I went in and in addition, my mom was there at it memorize the lines first time I had to memorize lines which is always weird when you're seven you know and I went in there and he walked right outside and he told my mom I got the part and it was just like so cool so this this industry fell in my lap like we never try to chase it or want to be it or you know it just kind of you know when like kind of miracles happen and you know your destiny just falls into your your lap and who you meet at what time or whatever everything's about timing and it, it, it worked for me. So Tara, Tara, do you think that your instincts have really kind of drawn your career where, you know, when, when the, when, you know, a project comes along, you're like, and everyone's like, mm, maybe not. And you're like, no, this is really going to work. And then when things aren't working and you're like, I think it's time to go and maybe go to another country or go somewhere else to kind of feel that out, let's go. And, and that has really worked for you. I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I did The Last American Pie for American Pie Reunion. This is the reunion that's been 20 years in the making. What does it feel like to be back together again? Kind of well, crazy. Yeah. Really crazy. You saw everyone, it was like kind of the same thing, but like everyone's lives changed so much. A lot of kids now. Yeah. 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 Except uh, we toured the world. We literally were in London, Spain, Italy, Germany. We went all around the world to promote the film. And at the end of the movie, everyone was leaving. They're like, where's Tara? And I came downstairs and I said, I'm not leaving. I feel I need to stay here. It's my gut instinct. And I did. And uh, I stayed and I lived in Paris for about a year. And then I lived in, um, went to Santa Fe for the summer. And then I lived in London. And then I got a phone call. And it sounds very silly. But I got a phone call from LA and they said, Tara, you have an offer. It's a really stupid movie, but they offered a lot of money. You got to do it because you haven't worked for a while now. Just do it. No one's going to see it. And it's called Dark Skies. I'm like, okay, well, Dark Skies doesn't sound so bad in your resume. So I start shooting it. I come home. I move home for the first time, which is kind of weird. It's been a long time. And I come home. And I start shooting the film. And all of a sudden, the second day of shooting, they go, oh, we changed the movie title. It's now called Sharknado. And I was like, are you kidding me, dude? I can't do like a movie called Sharknado. Like no one's ever going to cast me again. And like, it's the worst title ever. And then who knew that Sharknado would turn around and make $2.5 billion like, of the franchise. It was huge. Do you think that was kind of a result of what had happened to you in Hollywood because, you know, it's so funny uh, reading, you know, reading your filmography. Cause I don't, when, when, you know, and you know this too, it's like when we become friends with each other, you don't really, you're not looking each other up and you know, these things like we're on each other's Instagram. We're like, oh, cute, 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 you know? And then we get to know each other, but it's, you know, but when I have to sit down and do something like today, and then I'm like, all right, I got to really read about her and the full and the full like resume and everything about it. And, you know, I, I what you what you just said, I think is really interesting because do you think that that was really a result of kind of what had happened to you in the U.S. with, um, you know, how they were really attacking you? And then, you know, you did that show, Paradise, which funny enough, really wasn't even a thing, but then turned into the thing and you didn't even do it that long. And that was the, that was something that just kind of blew up, which just seemed like a cute, fun, great little gig, you know? And then, but it really kind of, it almost turned your movie career. And then it was like, well, what happened? You know what I mean? And then and then also you had had some mishaps within that, um, with the surgery and how they had treated you from everything, which every girl in surgery, you know, every girl in Hollywood, everyone we know has done something and none of that was a big deal, you know? And it's funny enough, cause now everyone goes and films it, <laughs> whether they're going to, they're filming their surgeries and all this stuff. and. And the things that you kind of did were not even that serious, you know? And they made it into such a headline 
Do you think it was because they didn't have anyone else to kind of turn to? Um, I think because I was a bit older than, you know, some of the girls and I had, um, at that time, Paris wasn't that famous yet. Um, Lindsay was in Parent Trap, you know, um, no one was there yet. So I think I was like the godmother. <laughs> the, the trailblazer of parties. Yeah. And when I- You're the godmother Paris, of party. Oh my I God. The that, godmother that's, that's, your, that's, your good, that's a good one. I like that. I think I really was. And everyone else that followed me, uh, even from the Kardashians or everyone else, I was the first one that, that kind of started this this image, except the difference with me is that I never did sex tapes. I never did, I never did anything wrong. I've never even got a speeding ticket. But what I did get punished for, if I wasn't on work and I wasn't shooting, I went to Europe right away and I'd be popping bottles and having a great time. But who doesn't do that? And like everyone does that in real life. But that's when the the, the it turned around with social media. All of a sudden we got TMZ. We had Perez Hilton, we had page six, you know, and, and they knew I was just open, you know, and the more the yeah. people talked about me, the more it got worse. And then everyone around me didn't even get in trouble for whatever, they, they were in jail and stuff like that. I, I, like, I didn't, I've never been in jail. Like, I'm, I swear, like I've never done anything wrong. And all of a sudden I'm getting to be the bad girl image. And I was like, well, that's not really fair because Everyone is a bad girl, but I'm not being a bad girl. Like when I did Paradise, I thought I was Willy Wonka and I was showing the world the chocolate factory. Like I thought, all right, look at it. I, lo I love that analogy, by the way. I love that analogy. That's a great analogy. But I thought, here's people that are never going to be able to go to these places. So I was like, here's Trans Santa Fe, here's Ibiza, here's Sardinia, you know, like, and I showed them all around the world in the best restaurants and the best places. And I thought that was like, you know, Everyone else besides America really love that show. Like if I go to any other country, they're like, paradise, even to this day. But with America, because I was a movie star, I wasn't allowed to do that. And that really hurt my career. And I didn't understand, you know, because then everyone else was doing reality shows or doing anything. They were making millions and making brands and doing this. And then it hurt my movie career. But you even know? TMZ, I mean, they came up to me and said, if you weren't who you were, we would have no TMZ. Like, I mean, like they told me to my face. So I was just on an attack. So like anything I did was on tape or this or that. Like it, it was pretty awful. And that's why I left. And it wasn't because I was just a girl. It was because I was an easy target. I didn't have the money like Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian and all them have with the greatest lawyers in the world. And if you try to sue them, you're going to get crushed. So what do you got to do? You got to go away for a little while. And then all these girls came in and, and, and did all these crazy things that I never tried or did. And they just killed it, like doing great. Like they, they got great things from it. I didn't do anything like that, you know, like, but that's okay. You know, I'm still here now and I'm getting like the second coming of, of, of my age and I've never been happier. And, and if I didn't fall down the steps, basically, not, I never fell down the steps, but if I didn't, if I didn't get checked and, and get hurt and realize what was going on, I would never be the girl sitting here and also being your friend that I'm talking to right now. I've learned so much about that. And I learned my privacy and I learned who's my friend, who I need to keep around me and who I love. Yeah, no, I love that. What I really love, which which brings me to kind of your next kind of chapter is that, you know, number one, we know everybody knows you love a pup. And you have your fabulous new show, which I want to hear all about and all of us want to hear about, called, uh, which is Walking in L.A., which was based on the best-selling book, Pet Sitter's Tale. So this movie really spoke to me because I, um, I'm i not married, uh, I don't have kids. And I think actually it's something really important that I should say more than the, the TV show. I think in Hollywood, if you don't have kids, you're not married, you're judged. So they still think you're that party girl from 40 years ago. But all of a sudden, if you have a kid and you get married, oh, she grew up, she's great. 
but what if you can't have kids? Right? Well, what if you don't want to get married? Like you, you can't judge people that anymore. And I think it's the one thing I think that is really unfair about our society. And like, as soon as you do that, all of a sudden you're great. But if you don't do that, you know, all of a sudden everyone's pregnant. Everyone's having babies right now, you know, and they're great. But I'm not married. I don't have babies right now. And I'm still not great. But yet my career is taking off, but they all want me to get married. And everyone wants me to have a baby. But what if you really don't want to have one? It's not that you don't like babies. You know, it's not that you don't want to get married, but it's just not for you right now at this time. And I, I really wish that Hollywood stopped judging women about that because it's not fair. You shouldn't just have to no. marry someone, have a baby, because if you do, your career will be bigger. You know, I'm- No, I, I agree with you. And you know, uh, Chelsea Handler has been really vocal about that because she is like, look, it's not happening. <laughs> it didn't happen for me. Why am I being judged for this? And first of all, I don't want to hear Even about Jennifer it. Jennifer Aniston. I mean, like, leave us right. all alone. You know what I mean? Like, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen, but you can't keep dragging people, like, dragging people's face in it like get over it there's other things to talk about and i think people just need to leave privacy alone when it comes to that degree of personal like personal personal stuff that that no one else knows but you so i just think Hollywood needs to relax on the whole baby and getting married thing and just judge a person on how they are and whatever like you know, Jennifer Anson has said a million times how much she's in love with her dogs. Like, you know, like it's her life. Well, I'm in love with my dogs, you know, and, and it goes back to you right now on the TV show that you first asked me about. When I heard about it, Walking in LA, that was from the best seller, you know, that went, I heard it and I was like, I want to be the, in this TV show. And then I got into it and I'm an executive producer of it. And it makes so much sense for me because it's really the true life. Like, like, I have, I'm living and it's a true love I have. And it's my two dogs, Basil and Bella. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that the show is going to have that, you know, I could be done with you in this interview in a couple minutes and then we could hang out and talk to your dog and you'll see how much we love each other. The dogs love you. You know, my dogs love me. We've all met each other, you know, and, 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 and it's our true love. So, I mean, love is love. Okay, so I wanted to play a game because you literally know everyone <laughs> everybody in hollywood from but but what i love about it is that no one knows you know you grew up in new jersey but you went to school in manhattan with everyone and you know we know so many mutual people just from working or being in hollywood and whatnot and i wanted to play a little name association uh for because we love a lot of the same people and we don't love some of the same people. So I thought we would just play. <laughs> yeah. So number one, uh, Jennifer Coolidge. Love, love. Uh, she was in all the American Pies with us. She's fantastic. We had so much fun with her. She really is this really kind, funny lady that's like has this innocence, but she's so smart. And she loves her own like little things. Like, you know, she's just, she's, I can't explain her. Like you have to, she's not far off from her characters that she plays. No matter how smart and genius she is, like she knows what she's doing. Jennifer Coolidge is a genius and she's a complete amazing comic. I love that because when you see her out and you're like, then she turns it on and you're like, Oh my God, it's, su it's such a amazing moment because she just captures you and you're just glued to her because you're like, that's the coolest aunt I ever wanted to have, right? Yeah, exactly. I love that. Okay, so uh, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton is a girl I grew up with um, and uh, she's a sister named Nikki Hilton and I, I like her very much too. We grew up together and then, um, you know, I'm a little older than her and, you know, she kind of went her ways, I went my ways. As we grew up and got older now, like we're closer again. It's like typical girls, you know, when you grow up and you're cool, then you kind of get your crowd, your crowd. But I'm really happy for her and I'm very happy she got married and she has a beautiful baby. So, and she has a number one book right now. So good for Paris Hilton, I'm happy for her. Great. Uh, Richard Gere. Favorite, favorite. Out of all the movies I ever did, he was the kindest person to me. 
I played his daughter in the movie and he like babied me. He was so nice to me. I mean, I was nervous when I first worked with him. I'm like, oh my God, it's Richard Garrett. And you know, we had like three, Kate Hudson. Well, he's the American gigolo, right? I mean, you're like. It wasn't even like that. It was like Kate Hudson was sister, Liv Tyler, you know, was her girlfriend. And, and then you had Farrah Fawcett, that was her mother, who's a legend. And they had Laura Dern in it, um, and Shelley Long in it. It was it was a huge, and it was Robert Altman, the biggest genius of all time. And I don't know, like it it it, it changed my life that movie in so many levels. It, it, like Richard made me learn how to act. Like he would wasn't even supposed to be in some of the scenes. I would jump out of the wall and say something. And I'm like, what? Because it was a lot of improv in that movie. And he 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 truly babied me in the movie. And it's not nice to say, but I was his favorite and, and he showed it. So I got the most attention from him and I really learned a lot from him. So I thank Richard Gere all the time in my heart. Really cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then another person who I find so interesting and I and I'm really curious about what you feel about him is Macaulay Culkin. I love Macaulay. Um, his oldest brother I went to school with. I actually went to school with Kieran and Macaulay. They were in the younger grades. It was a private school called PCH, which Jerry went to high school there. That's why I met yep. Jerry. And, um, and Sarah Michelle Geller. Sarah Michelle Geller, Christina Ricci, like, I don't even know, so many people. Don, Donald Faison, like, uh, Dash Mihawk. Uh, the list, literally a million people go there. And, um, Macaulay Culkin was, you know, his, his, Shane was my big, like, not my big brother. He's my best friend in school. We were the same age. And Macaulay was his little brother. And that was when Home Alone was going on. And he was such a big star at such a young age. And we would take him home from school every day and he'd come out with us and do whatever. And he was the sweetest kid in the world. I remember one time I was at his house. And I answered the phone because I used to sleep there all the time because I was living in New Jersey. So I stayed at their house all the time. So I didn't have to go back and forth from New Jersey on a bus. And one time I answered the phone, I'm like, hello. And he's like, is Macaulay there? And I'm like, yeah, who's this? It's Michael. <laughs> and it was Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I was like, and I said to Shane, Shane, it's Michael Jackson on the phone from Macaulay. And, he, and he's like, tell him. I'm like, Mac, Michael Jackson's on the phone for you. <laughs> like, I'll never forget that. It was pretty cool. No, that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, I really admire how he's really kind of taken his life and made it his own and did not care. I <laughs> you know? I agree. He's yeah. a great guy. Like, he's a great guy. The whole family is. Kieran's killing it right now. Like, Oh, my God. Amazing with Succession, right? And then, so and cool. Then they have a little brother named Rory that's coming up. He looks more like Macaulay, but they have another little brother that's coming up. I mean... These Culkins know how to act, trust me. <laughs> so to sum up, I just love talking to you at this level. Obviously, I love you in my life. You know, I'm so proud of you because despite the ups and downs, you haven't lost yourself. You're still here. You're still working. You're still relevant. You still have your heart. And I love you so much. And I'm so happy we were able to do this today. And I'm so happy that I could contribute to your art in any way I could. I'm very, I just want to say um, how much that meant to me, what you just said right now. And, uh, you know, in my life, you don't forget the people that help you in your ways. And, uh, you know, you've been a very good influence on me and you like really made a strong impact on me. So I just want to say thank you for having me on uh, in your magazine, on your cover and on your show right now. So thank you. Absolutely. Mm. Thank you. Love you. Love you too. Bye bye. Thanks.